This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright. And you're listening to The Krypton Report. And you're listening to Krypton Report. Up in the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's the Krypton Report. The all things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome to the Krypton Report. It is I, the Superman in blue, champion of the innocent, along with the muscle to my might, Superman Red, champion to all those who need it. James, welcome. Hey, how's it going? It is going well, man. Uh, we're back, you know, between, as everybody who listens to this podcast probably knows, James and I both have children who are pretty, you know, they're young, mine are younger than his. And sometimes children don't go to bed. And sometimes they stay up. And um, that keeps us very busy. Very busy. So sometimes I feel like James and I are sneaking away to talk. We're, we, we're sneaking away to do this podcast for you fine people. So just remember that. Next time you're listening, you're like, man, what do these guys do all the time? We, we have to literally sneak from our children to do this for you. <laughs> yeah. I, we, I can't do this until after I put my kids to bed. And sometimes people know. You'll hear my kids in the background. But right now, they're actually laying down. So, But hey, we're going to jump into this, and we're going to talk about Supergirl Season 5, Episode 3. And his new cool thing, because James is awesome, James is going to break it down for us and give us a quick summary. So take it away, Mr. James. Supergirl Season 5, Episode 3, Blurred Lines. Jean requests Nia's help in going deep, deeper into his past, which reveals that he used his telepathy to erase his brother Malefic from his father's memory as his father blames himself for Malefic's isolation due to his unstable power. Malefic then attacks Kelly by posing as a man named Pete Andrews, but gets away after a confrontation with Jean. Meanwhile, Kara, Alex, and James track down an alien who has the ability to shoot webs. They find the culprit in former Special Ops Commander Carolyn O'Connor, who is possessed by the spider-like Arafashion symbiotes. Alex uses a device to suck off the alien parasite from Caroline. However, she is later mysteriously killed by an unknown shadow. Lena asks Kara to steal Lex's childhood journal, which is stored in a federal facility. Nia confronts Brainy about their relationship. All right, that's good. You had some more details in there I didn't even think about. But we finally, okay, so we have been calling him Malafak because that's how we've heard it in other forums and how I've read it. But they've kind of pushed it together as one word as Malafak. And that's what we'll use, because I feel like it's kind of like the Kara Kara kind of thing, you know? Yeah, uh, if they're going to call him Malefic, then we might as well go with Malefic. Yeah. Even though his comic persona is Malefic. You know, kind of like Jean Jones, where it's, they call him John Jones. Yeah, they have the, they have the um, apostrophes in different places to break the words up. Marin, but then Myron. Yeah, so and that's, um, that's McGann, and they call her Megan. Yep, McGann. Megan. Hello, Megan. Which, you know, I wouldn't mind if she showed back up. Right. I get tired when the like, characters leave. She hasn't been around reason. since season two. Yeah, the characters leave for a reason, and then they never come back. You know, so... Mm-hmm. This kind of kills me, but... Um, yeah. Um, so let me put this out there right now. Okay. Okay. We have one. Okay. This, this alien, this alien parasite in the form of spider tattoos. Okay. (laughs) When the spider crawled out of the woman, like came 3d up and then like jumped on the guy and entered into his chest through his heart. I was like, Oh my God. Cause like I am arachnophobic. Like I was watching, um, Scary stories to tell in the dark the other night. 
yeah with ashley and um the the little the red spot with the spiders that come out of her face uh uh. Uh, i didn't even watch that as soon as as soon as the the spider started to i had my hand i had i had the pillow in my or the uh blanket in my hand ready to cover my face like a child (laughs) when those were coming out but um so yeah that that was like uh like that was cringeworthy but the the part that i have a nitpick with here is but she webs Kara to a wall there's no wall on earth that could stop her so even though she hits the wall she can literally just like pull the wall down with her hands with her arms like she's not stuck Mm -hmm. but they act like she was stuck there's no wall that she could be attached to on earth that would keep her <laughs> stuck there <laughs> just by webbing. You know, I think I feel okay. So I've been thinking about this so far this season. This isn't spoiler or anything. This is just kind of a, um, I feel like Kara is almost taking a back seat in this season. Like instead of her being the focus, the main characters, like we've divided it up into like a three part story. Where we're following Brainy and Nia, we're following um, John and Kara, and then we're getting like Alex stuff, stuff from really. Like, I feel like right now, and the way this episode ends with with Jimmy, um, I feel like we've we've gotten a too large of a supporting cast. Yeah, well, Jimmy's going to be gone, right? And I this feel like season, this, so. this episode kind of sets up for him being gone, um, mm. but kind of spoilers ahead for the episode we're talking about. But you know what I'm saying? I feel like her her cast has bubbled so much that we've we've lost our focus of of so much of just her. Yeah. You know, almost like, you know, her storyline, her is kind of just in the background and it's like, oh well we'll we'll do this because it's Supergirl, but they're downplaying her. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's definitely not the primary focus. I mean, you know, they still She's still involved in the central in the central plot, and and she's still the um, the hero, mm-hmm. but uh, of the story. But um, you know, so far so far this season, though, every episode has been really good um, in bringing everybody's plot together. You know what I mean? They most of the time, all of the plots feed into the main plot of the, Mm -hmm. of the episode. So it hasn't been a whole lot of filler for just the, just for the hell of it, you know, basically except for Nia and Brainy, but you know, they got to have their CW romantic stuff going on. Yeah. There's always, there's always romantic tension, dramatic tension from somebody. They gotta have their drama. Yeah, I mean, and we'll, we'll see how that plays out, you know. But that's that's nor here nor there at the moment. But we will uh, we will uh, see how that goes. I mean, this this episode to me, you know, it it works. You know, um, I feel like it's the episode that's really setting things up. For like you said, for what's to come. Um, yeah. Well, you know it. It, I mean, uh, it it plays into Alex's larger character story. Right. Um. Um. It it does help to push forward that um, Malefic is powerful. Is a threat. Is a powerful. Yeah. Is powerful and is a threat. Um. You know, we got a guest appearance from Sean Astin what, in this episode. Did that not, like, blow you away? Yeah, I was like, whoa! Like, like when was Sean Astin on, <laughs> like, he's on a CW show? I'm like, was he just like, hey guys, I'm in town, like, big fan, uh, big fan of, you know, Supergirl and the CW. You mind if I just swing by for, like, a day or two and do some work? Right. Yeah, Sean, yeah. I mean, I felt like this happened, like... I mean, okay. Now I could be wrong. I don't remember. Um, 
uh, if it's his father or stepfather. Because I remember him talking about it, but it's been so long and I'm not perfect. I am human. Um, was an actor. Okay. His father, John Aston, was um, uh, Gomez in the 60s Adams Family show. But do you know what else he was? Mm-mm. The second Riddler on Batman 66. Oh, really? When, when Frank Gorshin wasn't there. Exactly. So, was not sure if you knew that or not. No, I did not. But That's I just, cool. I just couldn't remember if John Ashton was his biological dad or stepdad. I just remember him talking about it. Um, uh, yeah, that I'm not 100% on. But I just thought that was cool, kind of bringing it back around, you know. I just kind of wish now that they if they were going to, you know, they're going to bring in Sean Ashton, maybe, uh, I don't know, you know, kind of wait and do something a little bit bigger. You know, maybe a couple more photo lines. Right. Uh, but no, it was cool. I liked the way he, he got in there using a picture that of, of friends and stuff that Kelly had that was able to um, adapt and get him to use the brain mapping technology. Um, right. Um, she had, she has the... Uh, Q waves, which was able to reset his brain and start his and in, in start his inception powers again. He can control minds. He can um, make people do what he wants them to do. Ex- yeah, exactly. Which is kind of cool, though, how they get linked in that section, and then now she's a threat because she can identify him. She has a, a connection with him or something. She can see him even when he's transformed. Yeah. And what's funny is I never really thought about um, the power to incept um, not being a Martian power. You know, I always thought like they could read your mind and make you do stuff, but not really, you know? Right. So that kind of makes... Malefic, interesting, and that's kind of what uh, the big thing is. You know, he has this ability, and it, he was different, and that's kind of why he got pushed out, and eventually helped um, the green, the white Martians fight the green Martians. So, I don't know. Very, very interesting. You know. Um, so, um, you know, this episode saw more of the just overall of what kind of like what Lean is up to. She needs these Q waves. Um, you know, Malefic, every person that he's taken a form of has been kind of neat because it's kind of like who is Malefic? Because he hasn't, he, you know, like John has his Hank Henshaw form that he always kind of returns to. But Malefic doesn't have that form yet. Right. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't have one human form that he that he resides in. So I'm kinda like, oh, okay. Maybe that's um uh, I don't know. Maybe that's good, maybe it's bad. I mean it's definitely good for budget, especially if they use people they just have in the background. Um But we see that Kelly can is linked can see him and basically they have to send Kelly away with Jimmy so that she's not hurt and I feel like out of everybody on the show like Alex has the quickest like romantic relationships they like come quickly and she falls hard right you know um, it's just interesting you know like Cars like had her big Monel thing that's gone, but for some reason Alex is just like, boom! I'm in love with everyone I come in a relationship with. Pretty much, I guess I, my thing too is just watching some of this. I get tired of like these characters pop in; they're a huge impact on the season, and then they're just gone. Like Sam, but there's been nothing about what happened with Sam and Ruby since they left, and they were yeah, so, they're a huge deal, you know. I was just like, man, 
it's almost like they're trying not to like mention a lot of stuff from the previous season. But whatever. Yeah, I mean, not a whole lot does does carry over from season to season. Um, I mean, one thing that Sam and Ruby, that's kind of messed up, though, just because, I mean, yeah, she was she was a bad guy of the season, which we usually don't hear much about or, well, I mean, they, they discuss them or, or they talk about them. But um, we usually don't see them much again Yeah. after the season, which is fine. But also she was a friend, you know, she was a friend of the, she was a friend of everybody. And, you know, she, she was, uh, she was the bad guy, but then they, they saved her, you know what I mean? Right. Like- and then, yeah, boom, that's it. <laughs> So I just yeah, but I'm just you know spitballing. She's, it, I, she said she said screw you guys. I'm going home. I really because my my thing is above all else is like I like um I like the um lose your train of thought. Yes. Um, I like to work with John. Sorry, Sayla's awake now yelling into my monitor, so. I do hear her. I do hear her a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> Excuse okay. me. She's awake, and that's why I was just kind of like, she's okay. Um, but what I was saying is I like the story with John. I always am a sucker for, I think John is a very strong character, and I'm always a sucker for anything they do with him and his family. Like I said, how many times that the they could have done a whole show of Martian Man Hunter show called Me and My Dad, Me and My Martian, Dad, yeah. you know, and then done and Me and My Martian Dad, and, and then done the Malefic story in that. Like I just I I find his acting compelling. And right, yeah, David Harewood, um, Harewood, I believe, right, yep. is um, Hare yeah, he because he, he's British. It's the, it's the A has the Harwood uh, to it or not? Yeah, that might be it. Um, yeah, he, he's really, you know, he's really good. And, um, I think, I think being, playing a, t- a telepath character, um, that he's acting very, um, very much like, emp- uh, like an empath, like feeling everything so much stronger. Like when he's, when he's hurting, emotionally um when his when he when he feels pain from um from other people's minds and and from his own and stuff like he's he's acting the hell out of it (laughs) but this i mean this episode was cool um i feel like it had a lot of beats but just not a lot happened um right well you know, we're, we're seeing what's going on here. The interesting thing is the monitor brought Malefic in. So, but beyond that, we haven't had any, any real connection to crisis so yeah, far this that, season. That's what I was going to like start mentioning with each episode is there's nothing that lingers back to crisis, you know? And I feel like that's because right now so much of the crisis is centered on earth one because that's where Barry is and Oliver is at the moment. Um, you know, spoilers for other shows, but, you know, um, Oliver was on Earth 2 and now he's not. So Yeah, for what I've seen, being behind on an episode or two right now, um, Tuesday nights, Flash and Arrow, it's like crisis night, you know? The, those are the two one, those are the two shows connected most heavily to crisis coming which, up, which makes sense, you know, because technically, uh, black lightning and Supergirl on different earths and Batwoman's timeline. She's not to them yet. Yeah. She's, she's, she's still, still currently in, before, um, the else world, yep. which however, that'll fit in like, like how many episodes of her show 
will it be before I think I think Else Worlds is and it's then eight because I is is because I think the storyline they're supposed to wrap up is right before her crisis episode and then it jumps to her crisis episode which is now current time so you would have the first part of her season the else worlds episode then crisis if you're doing it linear so so i mean linear linear it, they would probably jump it you know a handful of months like this story would go up and then basically it would be else worlds and then we got like a handful of months of a time jump or something into her crisis episode and we we'll go forward from there. Not necessarily a full year, you know, like every show in between, yes. in between seasons, typically a few months, you know, sometimes they pick up an initial right away. But if they do the next episode, they're like, oh, well, now a couple of months has passed and this is what we're doing now. Exactly. But so that wraps up Supergirl season five, episode three. Now we're gonna jump to news because we got some news. Good news. All right. So to kind of slither it in there, first of all, one. Krypton is still canceled. Two. <laughs> 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 so so I, we haven't touched on this, but supposedly uh, there's talk that J.J. Abrams might be developing the reboot of Superman. Uh, we haven't really talked on this yet, but we kind of been meaning to talk about it. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to say it's exhausting, you know, sometimes um, all this stuff. If they want to reboot Superman again and J.J. Abrams is behind it now, okay. You know, like, as long as he doesn't try to do his flyby script, like, I feel like where J.J. is now, we would get a good Superman just because I feel like, much like he did with The Force Awakens, he knows how to play it safe, play to the strengths, play the greatest hits of what people want to see, um, compared to what he would have done had he gotten to do flyby or his script had been done. And that's really all I'm going to say about that for now. Comments, James? Um, I, uh, I don't want like, I mean, I don't want a full reboot. I don't want another actor in the role. If we get it, I mean, uh, of course I'm going to see it and At see how point, it goes. It's not about what we want. It's what they're going to give us. Just I know. I know. Um, so, um, I mean, like, I, I don't I don't think that it should be like a full on reboot, you know, maybe some kind of like like requel, like a, a soft reboot, you know, mm -hmm. where we don't get the origin story, but we just we get another story and it's and and they just, you know, use what will work from the past and, you know, create a good satisfying story moving forward and you know meet somewhere in the middle between you know say man of steel and superman the movie meet somewhere in the middle you know what i mean don't 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 try to be superman returns and you know i mean even though i love man of steel and i love Zack snyder and the action and everything i mean it's so great i want a little blend of both in a superman movie Meet in the middle. Right, exactly. So, and I want Cavill back in the role. He's great. He really is. And off topic, but I can't wait till December 20th to check out The Witcher. Yeah, me too. Even though one scene kind of just made me go, oh, man. Uh, um... <laughs> But, oh, well, this is life. Um, and I agree. And I feel like we're just on that path where, you know, I'm going to kind of take what they give me. Cause, which brings us to our next big part of the news. So, we know that Arrow is ending. And supposedly we're going to get a show called The Green Arrow and the Canaries, which I'll be honest, is the least exciting DC show, in my opinion, right now. 
that I'm not excited to watch. Uh, right. One, because I feel like we've exhausted so many storylines. Two, I mean, we have we've had four canaries. We've you know, Black Siren is now technically a canary. We had the white canary who was originally the black canary. Then we had Laurel, the black canary, and then we had Dinah, the black canary. You know, if they had done this kind of show back during like a season two Arrow spinoff when Sarah first got there and had Huntress and done more of a Birds of Prey thing, yes. But like this season with Arrow, I, I, it, it's killing me because I don't care about the flash forwards. I don't care about the characters of the future. You're just giving me less of what I actually want in this show. Right. So that's one spinoff. The other one was announced. Are you ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? Uh, let's say which one are we talking about? The CW one? Yes. Yes, I am ready. We're supposed to be getting a developed of a Superman series called Superman and Lois with Tyler Hecklin and Bitsy. Bitsy Tulloch. And if they don't if they don't do that series, and then I swear right now I'm telling you, bring in her husband, David cannot pronounce his last name as Batman. That's who should be Bruce Wayne. On the CW. Is that the guy who played on Grimm? Yes. Okay. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Um Tell me who would not yeah, be I awesome could, as a CW Batman. Yeah, I could deal with that. Um, I liked him on Grimm, and um, he's done very well on um, A Million Little Things. Even even if it's just like a one-episode, two-episode thing with Batwoman, whatever. Just throwing that out there again. But no, so they're going to get their own series, supposedly. It's in development, which is awesome. We don't know what it'll spin out of crisis if it'll be a before and after or what type of series we would look at for this um you know some people look at this as confirmation that he's not going to die during crisis i just say okay we'll see because you know he could die and then you know supergirl flies around the earth spins it backwards who knows um, <laughs> you know uh, uh, but I the think- um well, Tyler Hecklin has posted on social media about t- about the story that they have to tell and stuff like that. And he does mention, like, being a super parent and stuff like that. So, right. you know, we which, get... Which I think is the wise move to do with this character. Kind of, kind of making this the sh- series, in a way, like a, um, a spiritual sequel. We'll use that term a spiritual sequel to Lois and Clark. Because if it's going to be called Superman and Lois, kind of similar play in the wordage. Um, but you know how like Lois and Clark ended where they were going to, basically a baby was dropped off at their doorstep. And in this case, you know, they're going to have a baby. So I think it's just it's the it's the right progression for the character. You know, it's Lois and Clark farther into their relationship and with a new dynamic that's never really been explored in live action. So why not make that the show? And I'm cool with that. Like I'm excited for that. Uh my thing is it's gonna be a twenty two episode series or like a limited series. Right. Well it is a short um or short um the the story of um you know superman being a father is new yes you know it it came up it came about through the end of the new 52 and it's strong and it's strong in reboot a lot of the superman in action stories and uh john kent was john uh yeah john kent was always around superboy was always around and involved and then him and um, Robin had their own books and Super Sons, so um, definitely a newer newer set of stories that that can be told, and a lot of freedom because they're so such a young such a young character when it comes to the comic books and and how much time that we've had with him. 
Right, because honestly, he's born in Convergence, Superman issue two. And then the next time we see him, we jump and he's a boy. A little and he's boy. ten years old. Um, so that gives a lot of time and it's it's something fun to play around with for the character. Um for and for the other characters, you know, for Lois and for Clark. It gives us a new angle. But the uh, the hard part is Supergirl has mined so much from of the villain and stuff aspect of Superman's story. What would be his story? Since so much so much do we ask ourselves. Um where's Superman? What's Superman up to? Why Supergirl's doing something? What will this show have? Oh, I haven't done too much of that. You, you know. <laughs> we've all done that, James. <laughs> we, we do it all the time. <laughs> um, uh, they had to find ways to write him out so he's not around for her show or what's going on. So it just, you know, just kind of a, a thought of where would they, what would they do and where would they take the show? That's for that's for general audiences sake, you know what I mean? To to throw in something here or there. Um why isn't Superman around? You know? Mm-hmm. As comic book fans, we know that he's doing his own thing. He's saving the world all on his uh all by himself when things are happening. Um so like you can't you can't have a show called Supergirl where your character where your main character has to always be bailed out by her cousin. Right. She has to stand on her own two feet. Otherwise your show doesn't work. Exactly. And so that, and so just, you know, to have the nods to him and to have him show up once in a while, I think is great. Other than that, out of sight, out of mind, I could honestly care less when I, when I'm like, I'm not like, Oh, when Superman going to come and save her? Like, well, she has to save the day. Mm hmm. So, like, it's it's definitely not one of the things that I think about that often. So, we got that coming down the pipeline, which you and, I, you and I have discussed. Like, I really enjoyed Tyler in season two of Supergirl. I really, really did. Um, I feel like something was off. And his Elseworld performance. And one of the scenes I liked him the most in was cut from the show. It's a great scene between him and Oliver. Um, so, I don't know. It just He fell off in Elseworlds. But, alright. So, the next big announcement... Is HBO Max is going to be producing a live action Green Lantern series produced by Greg Berlanti? Whoop whoop! What? That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> right. This is, this is like revenge for him because you know he originally was produced and was part of the original Green Lantern film, um, but it kind of got taken away from him. Uh, and everything, and it just, if you look at that film, how many people are, hands are in, um, the writing, the script, and everything, it just, there was too much going on. But, yeah, I mean, the movie, the movie wasn't terrible, I don't think it was the, I don't think it was the first story that needed to be told, and Ryan Reynolds is great, but I don't think he's Hal Jordan. No. I never did. And, you know, I mean, and it's still, it's still Ryan Reynolds. He's still fun to watch, um, in, in the show. And then we got Taika Waititi and the special effects are amazing. I mean, the movie costs like 250 million, 220, $250 million to produce. Um, you know, it's, so it's not as terrible as people like to say, but it's also, Probably not the first story that needed to be told out the gate. Yeah. And then, yeah, like you said, lots of hands, producers, writers, 
things like that. And then like I have the extended Blu-ray edition Me too. and like they repeat scenes like you're wasting time by showing the same thing over and over again a it's couple one, of times. It's one of those things I saw the like theatrical that. cut once and then I have the extended Blu-ray and I watched it and I remember thinking, okay, there was stuff here that's better. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you uh, what it was now. But I'm really excited for where this can go. Like, we know Brian's, like, mega excited. Like, he might <laughs> cry when this series premieres. Um, yeah. Yeah. He'll be like, I have to watch it again. I couldn't see through all the tears. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm excited. I want to see where it goes. Uh, the Green Lantern Corps, I haven't read a whole lot of them. But, you know, I've seen a lot of it in in cartoons, and they've been around in a lot of books, especially Justice League and stuff. Um, And awesome characters and awesome concepts. Um, I've seen both of the animated um, movies. First Flight was great. Um, So The, the, The Emerald Knights is good. It's just like an anthology movie. Um, yeah. So the TV series was great. So uh, the animated cartoon TV series, that is. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm excited. You know, it's supposed to be on HBO Max, so it's going to have more of a budget. Um, it's going to be big. Uh, we'll see. I mean, there's, we could speculate all day on what it could or what we want it to be. But that's just an exciting announcement. And then the last tidbit of news is kind of, I guess, came out today. Jason Momoa has stated that he's watched with Zack Snyder the quote-unquote Snyder Cup of uh, Justice League. Of Justice League. Yeah. um, Well, you know, he had posted a while back that um, he watched the Snyder Cut, and that was when he posted the video as well of when he gave um, Snyder that that brand-new expensive camera and everything Mm -hmm. as as a present. Um, so, and he was singing his praises about watching the Snyder cut at that point. And yeah, there's a new video, new interview out saying that he watched the Snyder cut, that it's way different than what was released in the theaters and that, um, the special effects are much closer to finished than what people speculate. Bro, I'll watch it with, with just like crap special effects. I don't even care. Yeah, I, unfinished, you know what I mean? Yeah. As long as long as it's, you know, as at least the that is there and there's enough that I can tell what's going on instead of just a bunch of people in front of a green room talking. Yeah, green screen and and you know, little like like markers and things like that, people holding poles with markers on them and crap. Um, I mean, give us something like, even if the special effects were like the, the deleted scene that they gave us at the end of end game with that crappy looking Hulk and stuff like that. You know what I mean? That's unfinished special effects, unfinished scene. Which is like, embarrassing if you're Disney. Yeah. <laughs> like they released that. I don't whatever, you know, they released it just to have the, the-, the movie back out in theaters for another month. But um, I would watch. I would watch Justice League if, if you know, some of the scenes were like that. <laughs> the Snyder cut. If some of the scenes were like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would. Like, I, yeah, so, like that, I know that the Snyder cut is better and has a lot more to offer than what they gave us. But that is our news, and now we're gonna jump back over to our. Girl of Steel and continue and talk some more Supergirl. Yes, Supergirl, season five, episode four, in plain sight. And Super James, do you have a synopsis for this one? Yes, I got something here. Um, with the help of Nia, Kara discovers that William is an undercover record a reporter who suspects that Andrea is a criminal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jimmy and Kelly return to their hometown, which they find corrupted 
by the presence of a new prison. They meet a teenager named Simon, who James helps in his mother's case. Malefic takes control over Alex, but is saved by Kara and John. Brainy and Nia reconcile in their relationship, and James leaves National City to take over his hometown newspaper. It is revealed that Malefic was actually teleported into Lena's office instead of the Phantom Zone as Lena forges an alliance with him. Dum, dum, dum. Lena, man. Dude, like, she is. She is, like, going down the dark path, man. Like, this is like her descent to madness. Like, she's falling into the, the evil. Like, this is her, like, episode three. So, as smart as Lena is, okay? Mm-hmm. As smart as Lena is, and... I mean, I understand that last season it was a lot, you know, she, she's had family betrayal, but there was family betrayal. There was friends betraying her, you know, Eve pulling a gun on her. And then she learns about the lie. So she had a lot built up on her plate, but man, is she holding a grudge for being lied to? Like she, she's a Luther for one. Kara is a Kryptonian. She's Supergirl. You know what I mean? Like, they don't just go around telling people their secret identities. Like, she does, she just, all of this, the world is, I need to make the world a better place so people won't lie anymore. Because my friend lied to me about being a friggin' alien from another planet who, you know, who saves the world every year. Like, <laughs> And I mean, Kara's apology <laughs> was very strong and heartfelt. And I mean, it was probably, yeah, the reveal, I would, I would her reveal in the first episode was probably the best scene so far this season. Like, yes. And she's genuinely trying, you know, like with Lena. And I'm just like, like she even in the last episode, she, she breaks into that federal facility and steals um Stuff lex's journals yeah for lena and i feel in one way okay um like we discussed like james jimmy james is leaving the series to go beat jacks and fight in the mortal Kombat tournament um <laughs> well actually what's interesting is in this in this episode jumping to the end there um james says call me jimmy he doesn't he, he finally like has identified who he is inside. He's no longer James because he was trying to be James. He was trying to be somebody and stand out from what he used to be. So he went by James. Now he's like, no, call me Jimmy. I'm Jimmy. And he's comfortable in who he is. Exactly. <laughs> I'm Jimmy. <laughs> um But he's gone. And he was the closest like kind of thing that Kara and Lena had with uh, Lena. Kind of like he was an extra thing that Kara had in the relationship scope of just Lena. So without him, I think it helps, it clouds more of Kara's judgment on Lena. Like he, ha- he had a different read on her, you know? And now that, that's gone. Right. So... So, um, yeah, pretty crazy how Lena's like, oh yeah, like this is so, so, um, so timely for her. She's studying these Q waves. She's trying, she's got information from Lex's journals, um, and the knowledge of Malefic's, um, inception powers and the fact that these Q waves can be used to, to, uh, make people good you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like like malefic's powers the inception powers she can use the q waves to make people good and uh like how timely that she is brought into the deo because the psychic inhibitors uh shorted out when malefic used his powers um he was more powerful than than those inhibitors and then you know his phasing uh, his phasing powers, he 
phased through the phantom zone projector beam and, and he, uh, <laughs> and he escaped. Right. All very, very powerful things. Yeah. How did Lena make it a teleporter and teleport him to her, her lab? Because as super smart and brain is emotionally vulnerable because I, he can only there you go percent with with Nia he, he can't oper- operate on anything less so yeah you nailed it brainy wasn't paying attention to her so um you know she did make a good point though and she said you've tried a lot of things brainy have you tried changing the variable asking for help which is sound advice um but, um, you know, this episode was cool because we got to see James at his home and they kind of could almost do a whole spinoff series. Jimmy Olsen fights the giant corrupt prison that's taken over a town with his new best friend, house squatting man, Simon. <laughs> right. Or uh, abandoned and orphaned Simon, whose parents are in prison for 10 years for shoplifting. <laughs> that's like some Jean Valjean stuff right there. Um, you know, I, I do like the scene though, where they go into the grocery store and the guy's like, he's stealing. She's like, it's not stealing if he hasn't left the store yet. And, uh, you know, she says he's getting it for me. I'll pay for it. Like, and they just cover, you know, for him. Cause J- you know, James has a good sense of character and about people and he steps up and, you know, I'm, I'm glad like, you know, he, you know, just to kind of, f- you know, it's out. I forget that it's out that he's guardian and he's other places, you know, like, so mm-hmm. his hometown, they're like, Oh my God, it's guardian. And, um, you know, he buys a local paper because he's going to take down on corruption. Um, and he, I like how he finds a loophole. He's like, he, she can't, she can stop me from reporting or writing for a paper, but she can't stop me from publishing one. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. He's like, stick it to Andrea Rojas. Exactly. <laughs> And Andrea is even crazy. Like, she's a character that's just coming along like, what is her game? Like, what is her deal? Because she seems like she's about to snap or go off the deep end somewhere. Yeah, well, I mean, we get in this episode that William is investigating her, um, you know, and investigating her supposed criminal activity. Uh, the, The doctor who was killed... In the last episode, at the beginning of the last episode, by the tattooed assassin, mm-hmm. um, you know, he was involved in something with um, with uh, Obsidian, and as well as um, who was it down in Mexico City in this Elena something, Elena um, Torres. Elena Torres. I had to think for uh, she uh, she was basically on the chopping block to be killed next. I'm not. I don't recall what her connection was, but she has, uh, William has a board in kind of like this. Um, it's kind of just like a, uh, a squatting apartment, you know, someplace he disappears to when he's trying to connect the dots. But Mm -hmm. other than that, it's not like, it's not like it's his place to go. It's not like his home. There was no furniture or anything. There was a table and a board with pictures and paperwork and, you know, yarn connecting the dots and things like that. But, um, do you believe him? Do I believe him? Yeah. I mean, he's doing something when it comes to that. And, and typically when it comes to like the board and everything, like he's investigating something. I mean, do you believe so, the story that he's there undercover and he's actually like a good guy? <clears throat> Um, I mean, I'd like to see him be a good guy, like him, you know, doing what he needs to do, but, uh, you know, and his whole, like, it killed me to act like that, you know, mm-hmm. to you and this and that, like, okay, man, like you, you, you go on and be like the, the male Lois Lane here, like get your, get your crush on, but, um, <laughs> yeah, get your crush on. <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was a little okay, man. Like, like I get like you don't want to be this guy that you're portraying, so that people won't want to like get to know you. But I don't know. 
I also so. feel like in some ways, like we were talking, like I said earlier, characters, I feel like they're running out of like steam. I feel like in a lot of ways, Dreamer has served her purpose. Like she's carried over and I don't feel like she really, I don't know. I feel like she's just, she's there and they're, they're at that point where they're kind of struggling what to do with her. Uh, they could be. I mean, she she was helpful when it came to um, John and Malefic's history to this point. Right. But, but yeah. That. But like, what else is she going to do? What do they have planned? Like they kind of wrote that for her. Like, ah, oh, yes, we can do this. I'm sure they could have found another way, you know, to do that. Like with the machine that Malefic used. Yeah. Speaking of which. So we find out for sure that John is the one that erased Malefic from the memories of himself and his father. Basically, the Martian equivalent of murdering your brother. Which explains why... It's a perfect way of explaining why Malefic has never been brought up before. Yeah. Um, like, in yeah, in the Martian culture, John definitely talks about, like memory is and and it's been it's been handed down you know through through john and his father memory is one of, is the most important thing um their mind the collective is like the most important thing when it comes to martians so you know for a martian to be like killed actually actually killed the memory of the person still exists and they live on in the collective but to be wiped from the collective like that is the greatest sin that they have Mm -hmm. so and so this this episode ends with pretty much the departure of james um it's a big kind of james centered episode in the way of just kind of moving him out of the narrative into his own story. Um, and I guess Kelly's with him or not, you know, um, we have a great, we have a great part in this episode where, um, you know, John is hiding his shame for what he did with Malefic. And, um, he, uh, he thinks that he's talking to Alex about and confessing everything, but really he's not. He's talking uh, to Malefic incepting Alex, and it's it's pretty powerful stuff. Yeah, the um, well, that inception, you know, um, doing doing what he did. He used the inception to get by. Uh, to get into the DEO and then used it again to control Alex and like what what was the oh what was the thing that they I forget during just during his infiltration and whatnot but like he does exactly what he does exactly what they were concerned about like Alex, w- Alex is hard up, man, when it comes to this episode and Kelly being in danger. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, about, I feel, I feel like, like she just, is freaking out in this episode, man. <laughs> that's what I feel like they just make when she like falls for somebody like they throw her completely in. Yeah. Yeah. She, she is hard. She is hard up in this episode when it comes to that, like. If it wasn't for if it wasn't for me, she wouldn't be in the crosshairs. Um, you know, she's in danger. Uh, we have this weapon that can kill green Martians, and I'm gonna get it ready. And they're like, "Well, he could, you know, he could incept somebody for anybody to use it on John," and and you know, which is exactly what happens. Um, although she kept firing on him, and you know, he kept closing the gap, so. I don't know. It doesn't seem incredibly effective. <laughs> I like to think that they tinkered with it so it wasn't. Um, I almost would have liked to have seen the weapon used on Sean, and we think that Sean uh, was destroyed just to, so that Alex all of a sudden feels horrible. Like at the end of the episode, that they stopped Malefic, but like Sean gets destroyed because of the weapon, but really he's, you know, he's fine. 
uh, he got like sent to another plane of existence or something. And, mm. she, and you know, one of those where it's like, you should have listened, Alex. How could you have used that weapon? Now Jean is gone. Right. But, yeah. I think that kind of wraps up this episode. I mean, yeah. I'm excited to see what happens. I mean, we're all just kind of biting away for crisis. I mean, that's, we're all like, these stories are good, but just get to the crisis because that's what really matters. Yeah. And, you know, there's no more crisis mentioned on on this episode yet, so. No, we haven't heard anything about crisis yet. Um, so far, they've all been, um, so far, they've all been in good episodes. Um you know, nitpicks here or there. Uh, but I, I think that they've used, I think that they've used their time, um, efficiently so far. Um, they haven't had all this stuff lingering forever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're, they're not, they're not, um, they're not trying to, build all this dramatic irony. You know what I mean? Like it was the last episode where it was revealed that Jean erased Malefic, which is a horrible thing. Mm -hmm. And it was this episode, one the next episode that, you know, his sins are, um, are revealed to, to the, the family, um, yeah. to, to their, to the friends. In, in a prior season or two, like that would be three or four. They'd episodes. have been, yeah, they'd have been stretching that out three or four episodes. John, what's going on with you? John, what's oh, going on I, with you? I'm this sorry, and that. And it's just a Martian headache. It's yeah, just... like with this, these crap reasons to just drag it out for no reason, um, just just to fill up time. Um, like, yeah, they. They definitely need to, especially with these long 22 episode seasons, you know, mm -hmm. they, they need to have a couple of mini arcs involved, you know, kind of, um, keep, keep things moving. Um, you know, less, less filler, uh, you know, have, have things work. Don't stretch things out, you know? Yes. Keep the pace up. Keep us invested. Yeah. Cause certainly last season, I mean, last season they had some great episodes. They had a, they had a few of the, a few of the best episodes of the series. Um, but there were times when they really pushed, you know, keeping people invested in the story. Yep. By, by too much filler and, and trying to stretch things out longer than they should have. I totally, totally... And so far, we don't have that problem this season, so... Let's keep our fingers crossed. We've got Crisis coming up slash in December. Slash soft reboot. <laughs> right. But we will talk more about Crisis and everything as it becomes more evident. And just remember, dear listeners. Look up in the sky.